The evolutionist does not answer the question. There's six different types of evolution, as I shared clearly earlier. Um, if the Big Bang Theory is true, then I would like to know what exploded and where did it come from and where did the energy come from and where did the space come from for the matter to expand into and where did the organization come from and where did the information come from? There's a whole host of questions that are a whole lot harder for you to answer than in the beginning God. Where is it, where's information come from? Man, is, this universe is not just random molecules circulating around. I mean, it, it, it carries information. Just like a book is so much more than ink on a paper, it carries information. And the DNA is more than just chemicals, it's information. So the evolutionist never answers the question, where did this information come from? Where did the energy come from? Where did the matter itself come from? And you gripe about my belief, I, I believe by faith in the beginning God. I know, I, I admit I don't understand that. But you believe hundreds of things by faith, you don't even understand that you're believing by faith. You think matter is either eternal or can create itself. What's well, the two choices? How did matter get here? The world is here. How, where did the matter come from? Did it just happen by itself? Or is it all just imaginary? We're not really here at all. You're faced with the option of, we're not really here. This is all just our imagination. Or it had a beginning. Or matter is eternal, which is in both, both of the second two options are in violation of the obvious laws of thermodynamics. Matter doesn't create itself. And everything degrades over time, so either it had a beginning or it didn't. If it had a beginning, then what was before the beginning? I mean, there's so many thousands of things you take by faith. You say, I say in the beginning, God, and you say, well, this matter somehow either was always here or created itself, and then this matter somehow became alive, and then this first living thing learned how to reproduce, and then it learned how to make something other than its kind. I mean, even though nobody's ever seen that, nobody's ever seen a dog produce a non-dog. Or you mentioned about, you know, the dog fact that a wolf and a, a fox and a dog coming from a common ancestor and off Noah's Ark in only 4,400 years. For heaven's sake, you believe they came from a rock. <laughs> I mean, come on. I don't think my theory is that silly at all. So. Uh, if my answer to your question is still the same, I believe in the beginning God, I do take that by faith. Here's the major difference, major difference that I don't think you're going to understand. I admit mine is a religion. They do not admit theirs is a religion. They want you to think what they believe is science and all of you should pay for their religion to be taught in this university. And that's the situation we have today, and that's unfortunate. There have always been situations where the majority taught something. I mean, in the Soviet Union 15 years ago, if you stood up and said, hey, kids, I don't believe in communism. I think capitalism is a better system. You would be in Siberia if you survived. And here in Emory University, if you stood up in your classroom and said, I don't believe this evolution theory is true, I think it's pretty obvious there must have been a designer to this system, you would be in intellectual Siberia. You would lose your job. It has happened to hundreds of teachers, just simply for standing up and say, look, I think the evidence is here, folks. There must have been a designer. If I asked you to explain how computers came to be, but you cannot use man as your answer, I only want a purely naturalistic explanation for the origin of computers, purely naturalistic. The answer has to lie within the computer. How did these molecules get together? How did this data get together? How did these plastic molecules come together and the, and the, the different uh, silicone chips? How did it happen? Your answer has to lie in the computer. I've already eliminated the only obvious answer to the problem at the beginning by my definition. They're trying to eliminate the only answer, to, the only logical answer to the question by their definition of science. They want to define science as things that we can observe and test and demonstrate in the natural world. Okay, well then that eliminates both evolution and creation. Both are unobserved. We don't see anything change. We don't see anything created from nothing. Here's the problem. Both creation and evolution are religious. I admit mine's a religion. They don't admit theirs is a religion. And all of us are paying for their religion to be taught in the school system. And I, for one, resent that. So my answer is still the same, God did it.